Apparently, God has a bank, one that most of the world doesn't even know exists, called God's Bankers. It's owned and run solely by the Vatican. The bank is controlled by a handful of Catholic leaders who answer only to the Pope himself, and it could be the most secret bank on earth, but also possibly the most controversial, and has been tied to the CIA, the Mafia, and even Hitler. For almost 80 years, the Vatican Bank has remained mostly completely unchanged, that is, until very recently. Okay, so before I talk about what's happening with the Vatican Bank and money today, I want to go to the very beginning of this story to give you a background as to how the Vatican and its bank have had an interesting history with money, to say the very least. And the story goes back to almost 100 years ago, to 1929. In 1929, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini gave over $90 million to the Catholic Church, but this wasn't a donation. Effectively, it was a bribe. It was given by Mussolini so the Pope would recognize his fascist Italian regime and gain support from the mostly Catholic Italian population. But apart from cash, Mussolini also gave the church 109 acres of land in Rome for the church to use as it pleased, land that became the nation state we today call the Vatican. I am going to come back to Mussolini's donation a little later on in the video, but for now, essentially, the Catholic church had its own country, so all it needed was its own bank, a bank that would become the most secret bank in the entire world. The Vatican Bank was founded in 1942 by Pope Pius during the height of World War II. Its official name is the Institute for the Works of Religion, or more simply, the IOR. And from the very start, the IOR was designed to be as secret as possible. The bank is a sovereign institution within a sovereign state, an organization with almost no oversight from the Vatican or the outside world. Because of this, it can never be forced to right any wrongs it may be involved in, nor can it be compelled to release any of its deposits. Its only administrative administrators are a small group of cardinals, men who report directly to the Pope and nobody else. And unlike basically every bank on the planet, it has almost never published an annual report, which is a yearly announcement of a bank's assets, profits or balance, a fact that didn't change until 2013, when finally an annual report was put out into the public. Even in the early days, the IOR was already filled with controversy, possibly because of how it actually started, why it was set up in the first place. According to reporting by NPR, it suggested the IOR was possibly created during the war to hide the church's dealing with the Nazis, something it may have wanted to keep hidden from the US and UK. According to this reporting, it also allegedly profited directly from the Holocaust, holding life insurance policies for Jews who died in these atrocities, then refusing to pay out the families after the war, simply because descendants couldn't provide death certificates, which the Vatican likely knew was impossible under the circumstances. In the 1970s, the bank's controversies continued. According to an 18-month FBI investigation, the New York mob were planning on selling almost a billion dollars in fake bonds to the IOR, bonds a Vatican cardinal planned to use as collateral to obtain financing for the church. The IOR also apparently helped launder billions of dollars for the Italian mafia, first by buying a controlling share of the Italian bank Ambrosiano, and with the help of the banker Calvi, moved the church's money into high-risk accounts to allow mob banks and companies to pass financial inspections. They'd later withdraw the money immediately after inspections and the bank would keep a cut. Basically, a percentage payment for helping launder the cash. And because of the bank's secrecy laws, it was used for decades as a safe haven for Italy's elites to stash money. At one point, it's estimated that of the bank's nearly 12,000 accounts, only 21% actually met reporting rules, a fact the church seems not to care too much about. The thing is, this is just a very small fraction of the controversies the IOR has been involved in over the last half a century or so. But in the interest of saving time, this should give you a small taste as to what has gone on in the past. How much did you know about the history of the Catholic Church's bank? And do you think that any bank should be allowed to be the secret? Anyway, moving on to more modern times, but before I do, I just want to let you know about the epic newsletter we have of 75,000 people plus that are getting extra financial nuggets written in beautifully written stories. There is a link down below. Okay, so now back to the present, and let's talk about how the IOR's interesting actions seem to be continuing into the modern day. Moneyval is a council of Europe's anti-money laundering commission, and in 2012, it published a report suggesting the IOR is one of the world's leading laundries for dirty cash 
crashed under Pope Francis, stating the bank was seriously deficient in its transparency and was lacking in measures designed to fight the financing of terrorism. Also in 2012, investment bank JP Morgan shut down the bank account of the Vatican Bank in the US, cutting ties with the Vatican Bank after a 35-year working relationship. Apparently, this was because JP Morgan was suspicious the IOR's account was being used for money laundering, also that the Vatican was refusing to be transparent about transactions. This should say a lot about how shifty the church's bank was acting for JP Morgan to take this kind of action, especially considering JP Morgan is the bank that was fined $2.5 billion for not reporting the shady dealings of Bernie Madoff and kept a relationship with this guy because he was apparently valuable to the bank. In 2013, a Vatican priest was arrested trying to smuggle 20 million euros out of Switzerland in a private plane, along with the help of a Secret Service agent who would have immunity from declaring the cash at the border. According to reports, the priest was using the church to launder money for the Sicilian mafia and also apparently had a very known history of flaunting money and was nicknamed Monsignor Sequincento, a name given to him because of his habit of carrying around 500 euro bills. So again, this is just a small taste of the modern controversies that the church has been involved in. And for the interest of time, I'm once again going to move on. But remember at the start of the video, I mentioned the donation from Mussolini. Well, over the years, the IOR and the church have been secretly building a property empire and they tried really, really hard to keep it as secret as possible. Over the years, the church has grown the value of Mussolini's nest egg many times over. By some estimates, it's worth nearly $600 million today. By others, a billion or more. Using the cash, it's purchased some of the most exclusive real estate on the planet, including upmarket retail spaces inhabited by luxury brands like Bulgari, as well as an entire residential block in Paris and Switzerland. And the church has tried its very best to keep these investments incredibly secret. According to reportings by The Guardian, the church used offshore tax havens to hide its connection to this real estate empire and created complex networks of companies, trusts and estates to make tracking its ownership confusing. As you might expect, anyone connected to this empire has nothing to say on the matter when questioned. That includes accountants and administrators linked to the portfolio, as well as the Catholic Church itself. And so this leads us to how things stand today. And the good news is, apparently the church is making some big changes in the way it's operating its finances. But to some, the these actions are just not enough. For the last decade, Pope Francis has promised to reform the way the IOR does business, working with authorities to make the IOR more transparent and to comply with international money laundering requirements. However, things have been moving very slowly indeed. After a decade, MoneyVal has announced that only now will the IOR be subject to regular checks and has said the bank is becoming more compliant to international standards with its latest report being generally positive, saying the church now seems to understand risks. However, it says there are still red flags where the church's bank could be abused, mostly where senior church or bank insiders could use the system for personal gains. But the Pope has said that in the future, the church is promising clean finances and recently has ordered all departments of the church to move any movable assets back to the Vatican so that they'll come under the direct control of the IOR, a move that's designed to give the papacy more oversight but that also has been suggested will give the church even more centralized control over its assets. And when it comes to real estate, the church might still not be in the clear just yet there either. As just this year, one of the high-end London properties was the centerpiece of a massive corruption scandal. But on the surface, at least, it does seem like the Catholic church is committing to turn a new page, with Pope Francis stating he wants to create a poor church for the poor, which seems to be a prophecy that's already coming true, as since becoming more transparent and open, the IOR's profits have been on a serious decline. But anyway, what do you think? Do you think that the church is actually cleaning up its act? And do you think that a religion should have this much wealth in the first place? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoy this video, you might also enjoy another recent video we made about another world's most secret bank. There is a link on your screen right now that you can click. Thank you so much for watching. We do have that epic newsletter of 75,000 people that are just raving about it. Highly suggest checking it out. Link in the bio. Also so please make sure you subscribe and comment. We'd love to have you part of this community. And finally, we do have a private membership where there is more discussion about all things finance and freedom. There is a link in the bio for that. And I will see you in the next one.